But did you think that was it? Did you think this was the only weird and incredible thing about the story? Well, you thought wrong. Venja's player was the first person I told about my new middle name. She thought it was amazing and said I have to tell the GM. This is Taylor's Tavern Tales and let's get into the RPG Wholesome Stories. This story is actually from one of you. It is by commenter Katarina Sunergan. I'm so sorry, Katarina, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Anyways, <laughs> let's get into the story. This is as wholesome as they come. It's too long for a YouTube comment, so I have to split it up into two apparently, but it's worth it. I'm a trans woman, two and a half years on HRT, living fully as my authentic self. But this story takes place when I was just getting ready to come out. I had just moved and was starved for role playing. I saw a post looking for a player to replace one who had left. The game was Vastmark, a Swedish indie game with a medieval setting. Light fantasy, alternative history. I decided to give it a try. The GM sent me a character sheet. I was taking over for someone else's character as this campaign had pre-written ones. The GM asked to make sure if I would be okay playing a female character, and I said yes. Internally, I was overjoyed. I love playing female characters, as I feel like I get to be myself more than when I'm not playing. Remember, I was still not out. The group thought I was a cis man. I was the youngest one named, I'm gonna butcher this, I'm so sorry, Alvild, a young shepherdess of 13 years old. We also had Eli, daughter of a witch, 15 years old, Eskith and Venja, who were 16. Sorry, Venja is now 17. She corrected me last time we spoke about it. It's important. Since I was filling in other players' shoes, I had some reading up to do. I wanted to play the character authentically and make her my own, but I also wanted the other players to recognize her even with a new player. Luckily, the GM had sent me an extension of my backstory detailing what had happened to my character in the played sessions. The story in a nutshell. These four girls are friends in a very small village. They are outcasts for different reasons. My character is a product of adultery, Venja is the oldest daughter of the mayor, which means people are afraid of hanging out with her. Eli is the daughter of a witch, and this is a medieval Christian nation, so that's a big no-no. And Eskith is freakishly tall and strong, which people don't like, so we're all outcasts and found solace in each other. Eli, knowing some pagan traditions, carved some ruins for us in wooden pendants just as a fun thing, seeing if she could do some little light witchcraft to make the boys notice us. We're not sure if that worked, because at the same time, the Fey folk were attacking the village in hidden ways. People were getting sick, tired, and worn down. It got worse and worse, and eventually, we were the only survivors. We didn't know at this point why this was happening, but we did see hooded figures studying us, and they were confused as to why we weren't affected. Apparently, it was because of the runes Eli had made for us shielded us from the magical effects that were going on. So we were hunted. We were chased from our home and towards the last session was where the previous player played the character I was to inherit reach a cottage my character had access to being a shepherdess and they spent the night there. This night, Alvild had her first period. In this world, there are fey folk, as I have explained, but anything non-human is rare. It is a very Christian medieval and there's a kind of person you can be in game called half folk. The game mechanics say that if one of your parents is fey, you're half folk. This isn't widely known, this is just how the game works. What happens if you're half folk is there is a possibility that when you hit puberty, you develop animal features, most often ears and a tail. This just means that you have fey ancestry. Fey doesn't necessarily mean you have this, but if you're part human, part fey, this could happen to you. People don't know or understand this, they just assume that half folk are punished by God for being wicked. So this night in the cottage, Alvild grew a wolf tail and developed wolf ears. This terrified her for many reasons. The loss of humanity, being even more of an outcast, and wondering what she's done wrong. Why she's being punished by God. What has she done for being so wicked? She hid her ears under her kerchief and tucked her tail under her dress. Later, they got to a castle where they found sanctuary. The lord of the castle sent his men to investigate the village. They didn't find any traces of what actually happened, but the villagers were all dead. Politically, sending his men was a mistake because the king was sick and had no heirs. So when the Lord moves all of his men, this causes a sudden stir. About here is where the player stopped playing Alvild and I came in. I read all the backstory and on the following session is where I joined. Venge's player, the oldest character, could not attend. So the game master quickly solved this by having her join the Lord's wife at a meeting where she was to explain why the Lord sent his men in this worried time and worried all the neighbors. 
so she came along as a witness, so that we could play even though she was absent, and the GM would solo play that part with her at a later time, so we could reunite later. I showed up and it was a great group. The people were wonderful. We were playing in a little loft, a nice little table, lit candles, snacks were laid out, it was incredibly cozy. It was easy to play with them. Even though this was the first time we met, our characters had had history, and everyone there were good role players. We've known each other all our lives in character, and we just picked up from there. And we lived out some daily life in the castle, because at this time the girls were safe. Eskith, the big strong character, has a character flaw in her character sheet that's called clumsy, which means she has a penalty on roles that require finesse or dexterity. But it also means that every now and then she'll have to roll for dexterity in order to not do something clumsy and mess something up for someone. And this happened while we played. She failed on her roll when we were in the bathroom, and she tripped over me and pulled off my kerchief, and Eli and Eskith saw my wolf ears. The way I play, I use what I've learned in acting. I try to disappear into the character as much as I can and don't pretend to feel things. I feel them. I try to fool myself into thinking this is reality, so my character gets to have spontaneous moments that just take me over. And what happened when they saw my ears is I just froze up and burst out crying. Real tears. The others gathered around me to ensure me, no, 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 it's fine. And Eskith was sad because she had felt that she had caused my sorrow by tripping over me. But of course, the tripping was not the issue. I was afraid that my friends would not accept me for being this weird thing. They assured me that they did accept me, and it was a wonderful coming out scene. Please don't assume that it passed me by how Alvild's situation was similar to my own at the time. I was not out to these people. They knew me as my dead name and my fake identity. Alvild was hiding something from her friends, hiding who she truly was, like I was. This journey had just started for her, and this was right about the time I applied for my dysphoria investigation, so Alvid was in the same stage of life I was, which was amazing. And now she was coming out to her friends, and I got to experience coming out before actually doing it for real. And that was incredible. This was a fantastic first session, and I knew I must keep playing with these people. In the next session, Venja's players showed up. This was the first time I met her, but once again, seeing as according to the character sheets, we've known each other for a very long time, and we just embraced as soon as we met. It would turn out that she roleplays exactly the same way I do, dive headfirst into the character's emotions, and that means we felt like we'd known each other for as long as Alvild and Venja had. Venja had told us what she'd been doing, and what she'd seen on her journey, her solo play to fill the gap from the session that she couldn't attend. She had met a knight with a squire who was half-folk, a young woman who had a fox tail and fox ears. She had thought that she was wonderful. Venja told us how wonderful, brave, interesting, and great she was, and she was head over heels amazed by her. Eli and Eskith were so enthusiastic about that and kept asking questions like, do you really think she could be a good person even though she has a tail? And Venja was a little perplexed. Of course she was, what are you talking about? But of course, Eli and Eskith were just trying to lead me with silent messages of, see, it's going to be fine, you can tell her. It was so cute and I did. I removed my kerchief and let her see and we had almost the exact same scene again. I burst out into tears and Venja hugged me. Again, this was the first time I met Venge's player, but in-game we were close friends for as long as we could remember, and she's like a sister to me, and that really came through. And she just embraced me and I cried all over her. It wasn't pretty Hollywood crying either. I had to apologize afterwards because I literally covered her in snot. And that level of crying, it was just incredible. After this session, I was sitting at home. I would daydream about these sessions like floating on clouds and was sitting at my computer reading the character sheet in the Google document that the Game Master had only shared with me and kept reading my character sheet over and over again, just playing everything in my head again. Then the game leaked into reality in the most spectacular of ways. The next day, I got an email telling me that the GM has approved my suggestion to add a space somewhere in the document. This email came to my true name account, not my dead name. This means that the day before, when I'd read the character sheet, I accidentally hit the space bar and thus received an email saying I, quoting my true name, had suggested the following changes in the document, and I froze. I was terrified. I knew full well that I was the only person apart from the GM who had access to this document. Intellectually, I knew there was no reason to be afraid, but I was. I was terrified. Hiding for so long, it does something to you. My blood froze. 
And it's not lost on me that this is pretty much exactly the same thing that happened when Esketh tripped over Alvid and pulled the bonnet off to show her ears. The Game Master had just seen my ears, so to speak, and I felt so weird. Like the game was leaking into my life, and I was terrified at the time. But it just got so spectacular how the game and my life were merging. The following session we all met, and we always hug when we meet. When he hugged me, he just leaned in and whispered, I see you. He just simply said those words, I see you, and then didn't mention anything else. He didn't give any hints, no elbows, wasn't pushing me to come out, but just knew who I was and wanted me to know that he sees me, not the false thing that I pretended to be. And that was big. That was enormous. I didn't say anything about it during that session. We were there to play the game, and I didn't want it to be about me. I wanted it to be about the game because I love it, and I didn't want to miss a second of it. But I decided right then and there that by the next session, they must know who I am. I came out to them in the messenger group right after the game, and it went just as well as it did for Alvild. They all accepted me without question, and I'm still friends with them. I made wonderful friends for life, and they're all the most amazing people, and I just can't describe how incredible it was to end up in a random group, have a random character assigned to me, and it just so happened that she was in the exact same state of life as me, and the great things that happened to my character leaked into my life, and changed the trajectory of my life for the better. It's just so magical. And it didn't stop there, because about a year later, I was with another friend. The friend who'd helped me come up with my true name in the first place was dabbling at the time in genealogy and asked if she could play around with my family tree. And I said, sure, why not? I've got no problem with it. She listed names of my grandparents and their siblings. And then she just rabbled up some names and she haphazardly mentioned that my grandmother's middle name was Alvild. This is not a common name, but my grandmother's middle name was the name of my character I was assigned in Vastmark. The character that reached through the game and merged me in many ways beyond anything I could have ever imagined. And this blew my mind. Can you imagine how astronomically unlikely that is? Okay, so coming back to how I got to this story. Names. We all have middle names in Sweden. And when I filed for my name change, making my spoken name a femininely coded one, I added Alvild as my middle name because that means a lot to me. And it turns out it's in my family's history. It just can't get any more perfect. But did you think that was it? Did you think this was the only weird and incredible thing about the story? Well, you thought wrong. Venja's player was the first person I told about my new middle name. She thought it was amazing and said I have to tell the GM. After all, he assigned the character to you and he's leading this whole thing, so it's going to be big for him as well. And yes, of course I did tell him. And I could not have anticipated his reaction. He wasn't shocked. He wasn't even amazed. He just said, oh, again? You know this isn't the first time someone's officially took the name of one of those characters in this very campaign in another group a few years back. Like seriously, this has happened to you before? That's just insane. Like what witchcraft are you dealing with here? Is there a coven of game masters who create these role-playing campaigns that bend reality? Which I'm all for that, by the way. That would just be incredible. Our adventures in Vastmark have been long and harrowing, and our friendships have only grown since then. But this story right here is one I will never forget. I love reading wholesome stories. <laughs> That's incredible. And I'll just quote my comment that I commented here. It's crazy how life or a certain witch GM can just nudge you in a certain direction that changes the whole course of your life for the better. I'm just, I'm just so happy for you, Katerina. This is just, like when I read this for the first time, I'm not gonna lie, I literally cried. <laughs> I'm not crying now because I I have to like read it out loud and I'm like focusing on reading this one made me this one made my heart so happy I think I'm gonna leave it here for now. Thank you so much for watching Be sure to give me a like and subscribe and turn on that post notification bell. It really helps I make videos every single day And if you want to see your own horror stories or wholesome stories Feel free to comment them down below and I will read them in a video as well as check out my do's and don'ts of D&D &D. and I will see you tomorrow.